Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Irene, allow me to be the first to wish you many happy returns of the day. Now that you are 21. Just a moment. I, I have a birthday speech all prepared. All right, go ahead. Lovely Irene. Just one moment. I'd rather not have any quarrel between you two. I'll make the speech. Not a oh. chance. You're the youngest. Oh, You'll right. have to wait. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'll make the speech. <sighs> Who has a better right than I? Irene, darling, you know how they, your three good friends, love you. But all three of them do not love you as much as I, who wish you every happiness. Oh, thank you, Father. That's very sweet of you. Now, give us all a nice birthday yeah. kiss. Well, let's sit by the fire and have a smoke before we turn in. <laughs> Irene. What, Tommy? Stay here a minute. Oh, what is it? I've known you for years, Irene. That's a long time. A long time to love you and not even tell you. Why, Tommy. Oh, I was afraid to tell you. But now you're 21 and I can ask you. Irene, will you marry me? Oh, why, Tommy, are you serious? More than you know. Oh, I, I guess I haven't much chance. I haven't a glib tongue like Frank. And I'm not a clever newspaper reporter. I don't wear a handsome uniform like Walter. Now, Tom. Irene, Thomas, why all the secrets? Coming.
Thank you. That wind, it makes me shiver. Lovely night to be out. Oh. <laughs> Just the sort of night to tell good, goose-fleshy stories. Oh, oh, right, right. You know, I'd like to meet one of these old castle ghosts that one hears about. Just for an interview. What? Oh, what a story that'd make. I'd get a promotion on a scoop like that. <laughs> you joke about it, but strange things do happen, even in these days. Mysterious things. You know what I'm thinking of, don't you, Mr. Von Heldorf? I? Why? You know, the blue room. I talk about that. It's Irene's birthday. What about the blue room? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just... Tommy means the blue cello in the castle here. The room that's been locked for 20 years. Didn't you know about it? Locked for 20 years? Have we a ghost in our midst? You mean the blue room is haunted? Oh, nonsense. There are no spooks. But... Oh, but what? Remember what happened to Bluebeard's wife when she got too curious? Well, tell me about it. Well... Three persons met death there under strange and peculiar circumstances. Yes, Paul. We have house guests. You can't come in tonight. Let me in, Paul. No, no, no. Wait at least until they're all asleep. I'd rather not speak of it. It's long ago now. I'm better left forgotten. But you can't stop now. You've got to go on. Yes, Father. Do tell us. I've never known what really happened. And we might find a solution to all the mystery. I'm afraid that's above even our Frank here. <laughs> Mr. Von Eldorf, I don't think I'm so brilliant. It's uh, other people that do. <laughs> well... If you must hear it. Irene was still a baby. My sister was staying with us at the time. She was sleeping in the blue room, our guest chamber. One night, I was just about to retire. It was one o'clock. And suddenly I heard a scream from my sister's room. I ran across the corridor and tried to get in. There was no answer to my pounding on the door. So we broke the door down. The blue room was empty. The window was wide open. And underneath, lying in the moat, we found my sister's body. An accident, of course. That's what I thought. And I still would believe that today, if four months later, my best friend hadn't been found shot in the same room, the same hour. One o'clock. That couldn't have been suicide? Suicide was very improbable. My friend was living in the best of circumstances, happy with life. We just parted the best of spirits. And yet at one o'clock, a shot rang out in that fatal room. No revolver was ever found. And both happened at one o'clock. But you said there were three tragedies. Yes. A detective made up his mind to spend a night in the blue room. In the morning, we found him on the floor, dead. On his face was still frozen a look of agonized horror. The physician claimed that death was due to heart failure, caused by great fright. This is better than any story I could write. Even you admit it. Now you understand why I never want to go into that room again. Paul, our butler, is the only one who has a key. Oh, come on now. Snap out of it. <laughs> we are not at the funeral. Not yet. Oh, he will see the bright side. <laughs> Coffee, sir. Good heavens, I was frightened to death. That's what you get for bringing up the subject. Oh, I'm sorry, it was all my fault. <laughs> he must get credit, even when he's at fault. Let's talk about something here. What should it be? Polo, bridge, love, 
Let's talk about the man Irene's going to marry. What'll he have to look like? Well, give me time to think him up. Please, Irene, let's have it. Well, if you insist, first of all, he must be very good looking. Good looking? I'd let you out, Tommy. You may go outside. He must be young, but not too young. All right, Tommy, you may come back again. And most of all, he must have courage. I have courage. Look at the brave young man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, laugh if you like. I'll prove I have courage. I shall prove it to Irene. That's going to be good. How are you going about it? I shall sleep in the blue room tonight. No nonsense like that, Thomas. I mean it. I'm going to prove that I'm no coward. Ah. Would you do as much? No one is questioning you, bravery young man. Why be absurd about proving it? You're afraid? I don't need to prove my courage. Leave him alone. I think it's a great idea. And what's more, a great story. A night with a ghost. I shall certainly accept the challenge. And what about you? <laughs> all right, I am with you. You're making too much of all this. Not at all. I propose that each of us shall sleep a night in the blue room. It's my idea, so I shall be the first. But there's one point we'll have to agree to. If something should happen to one of us, it mustn't prevent the next one from spending the following night in the blue room in spite of what may have occurred. Is it agreed? All right, agreed. Fine. Paul. Get us the key to the blue room. Shall I, shall I give them the key, sir? Well, of course. I really wish you wouldn't do this. Irene's right. It's absurd to take unnecessary chances. It might result in a solution to the entire mystery. Don't worry, the ghost won't bite us. <laughs> Here we are. Come on, Paul, open the door. I want to warn you, Mr. Thomas. Well, we know, we know. There's a horrible curse on the blue room. Come on, open it. Well? Uh, where's the light? Here, here it is. Oh, so this is the blue room. Looks rather comfortable to me. How musty it smells. Well, ghosts always smell like that. Oh, is that the window where... Yes. It's about 20 feet down to the water. It was here we found my friend. And over there, the detective was lying two days later. this closed. And each time the door was locked from the inside? Yes. That was part of the problem. Hmm. There was never any indication that the second person could have been in the room. But yet... How curious. Maybe it was you, old Ironsides. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How's your nerve holding out, old boy? There's still time to back out, you know. I'm not backing out. Are you? <laughs> well, at least you'll leave the door open, Tommy. Well, you needn't be anxious about me, Irene. I can take care of myself. Well, brave boy, it's time to go to bed. Sleep well and don't be late for breakfast. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tommy. Good night, Irene. Well, good night, Tommy. But I'll be anxious to hear how you get along with the ghost. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, I hope it's a lady ghost. It's impossible to write. Somebody is sleeping in the blue room. But when? Come Shh. back tomorrow. I'll signal you.
Walter, tell me. Oh, put down your book. Shh. Well, what do you want? Say now. You don't believe in all that, do you? Ah, uh, tomorrow morning we all be laughing about it. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's get some sleep. Good night. Oh, Irene. Oh, Tommy, I was so nervous. But, dear, I... I know something will happen to you. Please tell me don't stay in this room tonight. Well, you wouldn't want me to be a quitter. Well, why not? Well, I couldn't stand having the others laugh at me. Oh, it must be terrible to be a man and have to be brave. Thank goodness I can be a coward with a clean conscience. Tommy, please don't stay here tonight. Irene, if I knew that you were worried because I mean more to you than anyone else... Oh, Irene... I'd do anything you ask. Oh, please, Tommy. I'm going to stay. Good night, Tommy. Good night, Irene. What's the matter now? It's one o'clock. It usually is this time of the night. But what if something happened to Tommy? Oh, nothing is going to happen to him. Please, let's get some sleep. Now, listen. Of course, that story is nonsense, isn't it? Well, I tell you. I don't know about that. You see, one o'clock was the hour. Yes. And after all... After all what? And after all, go to sleep. Listen. Say, what's the matter now? Don't you hear anything? No. That's very strange. What? Heldorf's car just left. No, at this hour? I wonder what that means. Oh, well, we'll find out tomorrow morning. Maybe. Good night. There's no sound from Tommy either. Of course not, because he's asleep. Good night once again. Good night. Mr. Thomas, half past eight, sir. So worrying about Tommy he kept you from sleeping. Yes, I was afraid for him. Lucky boy. But tonight, I shall have the honor. <laughs> and tomorrow night, young lady, I shall look forward to very excellent worry. Good morning, darling. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Where's Tommy? Oh, I guess he's late as usual. <laughs> Mr. Von Heldorf. Mr. Von Heldorf. Mr. Thomas doesn't answer. I've knocked and knocked, sir, and I can't seem to arouse him. Tommy, Tommy, open the door. Tommy, now none of you are joking. Oh, Tommy, please answer us. Give me the key, Paul. I haven't the key, sir. Mr. Thomas locked the door on the inside. And there's only one key? Yes, sir. Oh, I hope nothing happens to me. Oh, please. 
Please, quiet. Let's break the door down. Mr. Van Helder, this window was closed last night. Yes. Exactly the way it happened before. Oh, don't say that. Oh, everything can be explained normally. Well, go ahead, explain. He possibly opened the window and leaned out too far. You mean suicide? <gasps> Ridiculous. What reason could he have? Well, maybe it was an accident. Well, I'll have a search, starting for him at once. I'll go with you. Oh, this is frightful. Oh, no, no, Irene, don't excite yourself. <laughs> I take you to your room. You better have the lock fixed right away. Right away, sir. Mary, Mary, did you hear what happened last night? Well, don't tell me the old cat's had kittens again. No, no. It's Mr. Thomas. What? He disappeared. Where to? If we knew where he was, he wouldn't be disappeared, stupid. He slept in the blue room. The ghost room? And he's gone. Oh. Paul, is it really true about Mr. Thomas? Yeah. Oh. I warned them, but they laughed at me. But I tell you that anybody who sleeps in the blue room is never heard of again. Good morning, Mac. Oh, good morning, sir. Trouble? Yes, the ignition's gone bad again. Oh. Must have happened this morning, huh? This morning? Mr. Faber said he saw the car leave here about one o'clock. <laughs> Mr. Faber must have been mistaken. Oh. The car hasn't been out since yesterday morning. Oh. <laughs> well, it's easy to mistake a car at night. Yeah. Wait here. That is strange. Too strange. Anything new? Not much. We found this. Tommy's. Yes. We found it 20 yards beyond the castle. Across the moat? Yes. This thing grows more involved every moment. I think you ought to call the police. I think you're right. No, no, don't, don't. Uh, let us search the, the water first. Don't bring the police in, not now. That only means the newspapers. If we can find the body there, without the police, Well, have you thought it over? Yeah. I don't want to have anything more to do with you. All right. Then I'll tell them what happened last night. You don't dare. You just watch me. I, you... No, I can't believe it was an accident. The coincidence is so... Paul, what has happened? I, I heard Miss Irene scream, sir, and I found her on the floor. Irene. 
Heidi, do you hear me? Tell us, darling, what has happened. Well, where has he gone? Who? Who was here? A strange man. He came at me and grabbed me. A strange man? Did you see anybody, Paul? I did not, sir. A stranger could hardly have entered the room. Every door leading to the outside is locked. Oh, but he was here. I saw him with my own eyes. He came at me and... Well, of course someone was here. Irene couldn't have imagined that. And what's more, he'll be coming back. You think so? Perhaps sooner than we think. Providing we don't call the police. Why? Because if he called the police, he'd be warned. But if he does come back again, he'll find me. I will sleep in here tonight. Good evening, Paul. What are you doing here? Oh, I... I Go on. Go to bed. I beg of you, Frank, please don't stay in that room tonight. Now, Irene, just because something happened to Tommy, it's no reason for me to show the white feather. Yes, I know, but it's you... It's no use. Ever since we found out that this ghost seems to have human features, I'm very anxious to stay there. All right, Frank, but it's understood. If you hear the slightest I noise... Know. I shoot. And six chambers ought to be enough for any ghost. Well, time to go to bed. Now, I don't want you to be worried. I'll take my courage with me. <laughs> so long. Good night, Irene. Good night. <laughs> you sound as though you were saying goodbye. Good night, Walter. Good night, old boy. Oh, I think Frank was right. It's bedtime for little girls. Oh, let me stay up with you. I'm too scared to go to bed. All right, darling. Where's your father? He went to bed an hour ago. He wasn't feeling very well. Mm. They haven't found Tommy yet, you know. Oh, I know. It's dreadful. And now if something should happen to Frank... Oh, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to him. He'll be a jump ahead of... Whatever it is, a ghost or... Uh, or what? Anything. Walter, you've got to promise me you won't sleep in that blue room. <laughs> All right, Irene. I believe I can promise you that. Thank you. Are you sure you want to stay up all night? Yes, I think it's better that I stay awake. Then I will, too. 
Oh, no, Eileen, you shouldn't. Why? You see? It isn't worrying Frank much. <laughs> See? It's all over and everything is all right. <gasps> Walter, don't go up there. Walter. It, it came right from there, sir. Frank. <gasps> what? Irene. Please. What's happened? Not... Yes, Frank. Frank? He's shot. Good God. We must let the police know now. Get Commissioner Foster from the homicide squad. Yes, sir. I shall lock the door myself. I want to talk to him personally. Yes, sir. The shot fired. Hello, homicide squad. Got a drink. Thank you. Captain Brink speaking. I want to talk to Commissioner Foster. No, the Commissioner's away until morning. What's the trouble? Murder? Where? Beldorf Castle? All right, I'll get in touch with him right away. He can be out there by, by 9 o'clock. All right. Foster's coming. You know him? Oh, yes. He's a very good detective. Let's hope he'll put a name to all this. Someone is ringing from the blue room. What? That's impossible. I locked the door with this key. Oh, don't, 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 don't you hear? Come on, Paul. You better stay here. How did a cat ever get in here? Are you sure there is no other key to this room? There is no other key, sir. The gun! Oh, Mary, the commission wants to talk to you upstairs. What have I got to do with your murders? They ain't my murders. Don't believe mixing myself up in other folks' murders. Come on, get along. Uh, where's Betty? In the garage with Max. Go and get both of them. 
Oh, did they do it? Never mind your questions. Maybe you did it yourself. Well, the whole thing seems to have no solution, Commissioner. We'll see, Mr. Brink. Everything can be solved. Oh, come in, come in. Don't hesitate. Would you sit down? Everybody is here, I believe. Let's begin. Who was the first to discover the dead man? The butler and I. And uh, a little later, Miss Irene. Where were you when you heard the shot? Here. In this room. Anyone with you? I was sitting there with Miss Irene. Did you leave the instant you heard the shot? Instantly. Did you note the exact time? About half a minute after one. Thank you. The butler, please. You also heard the shot, didn't you? Yes. Where were you at the moment? I was in my room. I was getting ready for bed. Where is your room located? In the right wing of the castle, at the end of the corridor. That's enough now. Sit down. Uh, Kruger. And uh, now, uh, Mr. von Heldorf, please. You also heard the shot? No. I was fast asleep. I had gone to bed at 11, as I wasn't feeling well. I didn't wake until I heard the commotion. Thank you, Mr. Van Hello. Thank you. Oh. That's very interesting. The butler again, please. There's something else I want to ask you. Come here. You said a moment ago you heard the shot in your room, is that correct? Yes. Exactly how much later did the butler arrive after you, Mr. Brink? We both arrived at the same moment. Well, well, isn't that remarkable? I learned from my assistant that it takes exactly a half a minute to run from your room to the blue room. Now, how do you explain that you arrived there at the same time as Mr. Brink? Well, what have you to say? And may I answer for you? At the time of the murder, you were not in your room, is that correct? Yes. There. You see? Where were you last night at one o'clock? Come on, where were you? I was in the corridor. I wanted to make certain all the windows were locked. Oh. And you didn't have a chance to do that sooner, I suppose. I suddenly got nervous. You see, the disappearance of Mr. Thomas was still preying on my mind. I, I was nervous and couldn't sleep. Oh, you couldn't sleep. Well, isn't that too bad? That's enough. Sit down. Mary, the cook. Mr. Commissioner, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't hear a thing. I, and I'm deaf anyhow, so how could I commit your murder? And anyhow, I was asleep all the time. You believe me, don't you, Mr. Commissioner? All right, all right. Stop your bawling. And please remember, it isn't my murder. Not so sure about that. The chauffeur, please. Did you hear the shot? No, sir. I was asleep at the time. What's more, I couldn't have heard the shot because my quarters are too far from the house. Where were you the night Mr. Thomas Brent slept in the blue room? In my room, Commissioner. And yet the car was out of the garage at one o'clock. What's your answer to that? 
I know nothing about it, sir. Don't believe him, Mr. Detective. He's a liar by the clock. Oh, you seem to be well-informed, young lady. Come here. Well? I saw him drive the car that night myself, with these two eyes. That's not true. It most certainly is. I stood in the back of the garage and I saw everything. Don't you believe her? She's lying. You're lying. You're lying! Just a moment. One of you must be lying. Probably both. The question is, which is the better at it? It's him, Mr. Commissioner. He can give you cards and spades online. After all, I've got two eyes in my head and I see what I see. And when I told him I was going to tell, right out there in the corridor, he grabbed me and choked me and said he would kill me if I told a living soul. When did all this happen? Just now. About five minutes ago, just before we came into this room, every bone in my body still hurts the way he shook me. Oh, Mr. Commissioner, you... Just a moment, just a moment. Still light it. Good cigar. It's yours, isn't it? Young lady, do you realize how accomplished this man is? He managed to shake and choke you without dropping the ash? What reasons have you for incriminating him? Mr. Commissioner... Don't you realize that in making false statements you incriminate yourself? I'm going to place you under arrest. It's a very good idea, sir. Get up and sit down. Mr. Commissioner, please, I'll tell everything. It's high time. Go on. Last night, I saw a strange man leave the blue room. What time was that? It was um, about a quarter past twelve, just before Mr. Faber entered the blue room. You're not making another mistake, are you? This strange man story doesn't sound quite convincing. But, sir, I recognized him. Who was it? Oh. Come on, let's have it. Well, the, the strange man that left the blue room was... Not alone. Did you recognize the person with him? Who was it? Answer my question. Is that person in this room now? Where? Mr. Van Heldorf. Is the statement of this girl correct? No, the girl's lying. Oh, I see. You can sit down. You told me that you went to bed around 11 o'clock. Is that correct? I did. And you were awakened by the noise? Yes. At what time did you arrive at the room of the murder? Well, uh, I can't say exactly, but... Uh, oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Van Herdo, but you arrived just after we got there, didn't you? Oh, I see. What did Mr. Van Heldorf wear when he arrived? I... Oh, the same suit he has on now. Hmm. This is interesting indeed. I thought you said you were asleep at the time. How could you dress and get to the scene of the murder so quickly? Mr. Van Heldorf, forgive me if I'm obliged to doubt your statements. Sorry, but it can't be avoided. Nothing in my power to prevent that. At any rate, I must insist that nobody leaves this house until further orders. Phone headquarters and have them send a few more men up here. Thank you very much. That'll be all for the time being. On me. You stay here. Come on, come on. Now we're going to have a nice, friendly little talk all by ourselves. You seem to be very well informed. Tell me, have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Yes. What? Well, last night... At what time was it? It was... Uh... Ten minutes after twelve, I was going along the corridor and I saw Paul, the butler, standing in front of the window 
Making funny signals with a flashlight. What else? Go on, what else? Nothing else, that's all. Now, there's one other thing I'd like to learn. Sure. What were you doing so late in the car, then? What were you doing in the garage that night? And why do you roam all over the house instead of going to sleep as good girls do? And how can you tell time so exactly? Mm, that she-cat. Did she try to get my head in the noose? Mac, tell me honestly. Didn't you do it? What, the murder? Somebody did. Well, don't be foolish. I will admit I had the car out that night. That's true, but I... There you are. You know where I was? Committing the murder. I was over at the village, seeing a new girlfriend of mine. I'd taken her out for a ride every once in a while. <laughs> that's why Betty's jealous. Oh, that's it. And I'm like glad to be rid of her. Max. Mm. Tell me just one more thing. Didn't you honestly commit the murder? One of the windows was it? Oh, this one. No, a, a little more to your right. I can't believe Heldorf had anything to do with the affair. The idea seems to be out of line. Yeah, Mr. Brink, you'd make a very poor detective if you'd let personal feelings influence you. But when I phoned for the police, he was standing right by me. That proves he couldn't have removed the gun. And nobody said he did. Still, there is the possibility he might have some connection with the person who did. Impossible. I can't understand why you defend Heldor. How do you account for his connection with the strange man he was seen with by the maid? All right, be ready. How in the world did the cat ever get in here? That's simple enough. Somebody has a second key. And who do you suppose has it? If I knew that, do you suppose I'd be kneeling down here on the floor? Wait here. We've got him, sir. Bring him in. Come in. Good evening. Get held off, Miss Irene, and the maid. Yes, sir. Will you sit down? Well, I hope you don't get tired. What did you come into this house for? Did you understand my question? Yes. I shall not answer it. Oh, come in. Don't hesitate, ladies and gentlemen. Is this the man you saw leave the room with Mr. Van Heldorf? Yes, that's the man who attacked me. Mr. Van Heldorf, I must insist that you tell me all that you know of this man. And if I refuse, I must place you under arrest as his accomplice. Father. What's your answer? Oh, it's no use anymore. I'll tell you everything. No, oh, please don't. I must. Can I speak to you alone for a few minutes? Certainly. Will everybody leave, please? And take good care of him. And now, what is it you want to tell me? What I'm going to tell you, Mr. Commissioner, has nothing whatever to do with either of the crimes committed here. The man you have arrested, my brother. What? Yes. And more. He's Irene's father. 
You expect me to believe that? Yes. Twenty years ago, he left his wife and little Irene. Uh, go ahead. Well, uh, I took care of them both. The mother died shortly afterwards, and Irene grew up in the belief that I was her father. The only other person besides myself who knows the truth is our butler, Paul. And in all that time, you heard nothing from your brother? No. Not until the day before yesterday, when he came here, broken in body as well as in spirit, and uh, wanted some money to leave the country. I was about to give it to him tonight, but the detectives arrested him before I had the opportunity. How do you account for the attack on your daughter? Oh, that wasn't an attack. He hadn't seen his daughter in 20 years. He forgot himself and rushed toward her. And I can, I can tell you now where I was last night. I'd gone with my brother to talk things over. When I returned, the murder had been committed. Why didn't you tell me all this before? Well, I... No, I never mind. It's just a thought I had. Oh. Of course, I'll have to check your story with the facts. Certainly. Uh, may I go now? Certainly. Thanks. Uh, I beg of you not to mention this to anyone, particularly Irene. I understand. Thank you. Walter, I still can't believe that Father had anything to do with oh, it. Oh, it seems impossible. Irene! Father, what does all this mean? Don't get excited, child. I had nothing to do with any of this. Well, who was the strange man? Dear, I'm feeling very tired now. I must get some sleep. All right. Any new developments? Von Heldorf gave me an explanation. What? Such as it was. His story sounds a little melodramatic. You think Heldorf's guilty? In any case, he knows more than he's telling us. Commissioner, I'm going to sleep in that room tonight. You believe then? I believe nothing so far, but I want to find out. If Haldorf's guilty, nothing will happen tonight, because he'll be cautious. But if it is someone unknown, he may return. You're right. Of course, you realize you may be risking your life. I'm not afraid. I've got an idea. Come with me. And you will be downstairs in my bedroom. Yes. And the house is surrounded. Oh, but the other detectives are officially dismissed an hour ago. Let's hope that our preparations bring results. We shall get him whoever he is sooner or later. Good night. Good night. Be cautious.
Two minutes to one. Not a soul in here. Get rid of that dummy. <laughs> Heldorf has left his room. You three search the house. directly behind this wall. Get an axe quick, we'll have to tear it down. You stay here. You three follow me. Walter! Walter, are you all right? Yes, dear. Come, this is frightful. No. Come on. Thomas, you probably won't believe me if I tell you why I've done this. Oh, Tommy! You confessed to the murder of Frank Faber? Yes. Why did you do it? I knew that Walter and Frank stood between me and Irene. You see, I really loved her. You thought after committing this crime, Miss Irene would still marry you? Oh, I must have been insane. I see it now. 
But how did you choose such a fantastic roundabout way to get rid of your rivals? A few weeks ago, I found the secret entrance to this room. From that moment, my mind was made up. Go on. I, I took advantage of the room's history, the old tragedies. So on Irene's birthday, I proposed that each one of us spend a night in this room. After all, you would have had to turn up again. What about that? Oh, then I'd planned to tell about the secret passage. That I was kidnapped, kept prisoner. Come on, Ivy. Oh, Mr. Van Heldorf. <clears throat> I owe you an apology. I had suspected you. I know, Commissioner. That's why I left the house tonight. I wanted to find the guilty one myself. I hope you won't hold it against me. Why, of course not. Come on. Walter, I, I still can't believe it. Oh, the poor boy. He couldn't have known what he was doing. Thank you. 